All right, guys, I need your help. So the spare tire location, I think I've found where I want to mount it, but I can always move this. I can always unbolt it. But right here, this is a stainless steel mount. I've got it loose right here because I've been kind of sliding it around on the trailer. But I think that's the location. It can kind of double as a step. It's still about three or four inches. It sets out from the side of the jet ski. I don't think I'm ever because the jet ski trailer it's so easy to launch with those e easy slides and i'll talk about this on a later video of installing these easy slides they are dangerous and uh how well they work i kept them on there because they work so well but they're also dangerous my jet ski actually fell off the trailer and right here i've got some e custom rims you can go on their website or you can get these on amazon i'm about to bolt these things up i'm so excited because these bias ply tires they've always bounced they bounce at about 30 to 40 miles an hour. You can see the tread's almost gone right there in the center. I've got some radial tires now. They're the same size, 12 inch rims, 12 inch bias ply. They're a little bit taller because the tread obviously is deeper. They're gonna last a whole lot longer and they're gonna ride a whole lot smoother. I cannot wait to bolt these up because the old tires, they set and bounce and that also bounces my jet ski the whole way to the boat ramp and I don't want it bouncing anymore. So here we go. Let me know in the comments below where I should mount this. I think this is the best location. I can always loosen it up and move that it. Trailer right yeah. here, because it can get so tight sometimes in these turns. Now I'm still about an inch away from the bumper. It's over 90 degrees. So typically, even if I cut the wheel lock to lock, it does not get that close, even whenever I cut the wheel all the way. I actually had to back up a little bit just to get it that close. What is going on with my trailer tire right there? What is all this foam? So basically I'll tell you, I sprayed some soapy water to find a leak, had a flat tire. These tires are like brand new. They still got the nubbies on them and they're only about a year old. So why is it leaking? Well, I'll go ahead and tell you, right on over this bead right here, that's where it seals to the bead of the rim right here. So that rim is all corroded. You can see the outside's all rusty. Well, the inside is the same way. This tire is another example. You can see the sidewall. That's some deep cracks all the way. You can see the belts right there where it's splitting across. Even though the tread looks good, this is a flat tire waiting to happen. You're going to be on the side of the road. Cars are passing you at 70 miles per hour, and you're on the side of the road stuck trying to change a tire. That's a safety issue. I get tons of compliments and also comments on how do I keep this thing pristine? You can see it's like a mirror finish, but the car's actually dirty. If you look back there, there's some black right there from where I've drove this thing. I haven't washed it in months and the jet ski's the same way. If you get close, I just put a fresh coat of ceramic right there, but it's got a little bit of water spots, but generally you can just take your finger and they wipe right off. So how do I do that? Well, Waves RX products, these things are pretty much amazing. The Epic Wash, that strips all the dirt and grime, but it won't strip any ceramic coating off. So basically they make this stuff non-toxic. It says right there, that's pretty important to me as well. And then you coat it with this ceramic aqua shield, non-toxic. This stuff is easy to work with. You can spray it on the rubber, the paint, the fiberglass, it works. It's designed for boats. It prevents water spots really good. And you can see, I haven't washed this thing. I've took it out to the river like four or five times since I washed it with that. And the boat's pretty much dry. By the time I get to the top of the boat ramp, the water falls right off, just like I just showed you. It's pretty crazy. By the time I get to the top, it's almost dry and I almost don't even have to. I take a little microfiber like this and I wipe off any residue just like that. And it's back like brand new paint again little behind the scenes so this right here shows you what's going on in this tray this uh stud it's actually really hot it's uh i've been trying to get this thing off and it just sets and spins it will not come off it's really a shame um that's uh really hot right there too it's not tight and it's not loose um that what happened was the nut itself the threads are stripped out and I don't know how it got this far with the nuts being perfect, uh, the thread being perfect, and then the nut just decided to strip out halfway down. Uh, you can see the gap right there. It should be, it should be tight, which it's not. And I don't know how I'm gonna get that off because it is a carriage bolt, which is, I mean, it almost would need to be ground off. Amazon, it had good reviews, which I thought. It is a stainless steel mount. It appeared to be like high quality. But if you get this, I'll have links down on all the description below if you like this setup. I would recommend using 
your studs. So go buy in some studs like that fit your trailer. So then you can use your same lug nuts. I tried the lug nut, basically it's a different thread. So right here, it won't thread on. This is a fine thread right here. I would recommend getting some studs like that. The lug nuts won't work. These are like locking lug nuts too. So I'd prefer to have these on my trailer wheel as well. And I feel like that's a pretty good location. There's a good, I don't know, three inches of space. It's never gonna touch the jet ski because if you're a, like a newer person trying to load a jet ski, yeah, it might touch the bottom, but even if it did, I don't think that the rubber tire would, would hurt at all. It might scuff it a little bit. I don't know, the rubber just hitting the paint might scuff the stickers. But uh, other than that, I'm pretty good with unloading and loading. And uh, I should never hit that. I think it looks really good in that location, actually. I'm pretty happy with how that is right in line. Um, it's not too close to the fender. It's actually as close as I could get it. And it's right on that brace. I know that's a really strong point on the trailer. Any vibration, it's not going to hurt. Uh, the other option would be up here somewhere. But I didn't want that. Basically, sometimes you back the trailer up a little far and I wanted to jackknife the trailer because a lot of people put them right there on the tongues but then you can't cut your trailer as sharp if you need it this uh, sharp so I feel like that's the best location right here but uh, that's gonna be a little bit of trouble because actually I'm gonna have to cut that bolt off and I really I don't want to mess up these brand new rims I'll have all the links down in the description below and uh, that custom mount right there that was from Amazon it was completely unrelated and I would not recommend using the bolts because if you were stuck on the side of the road, you wouldn't be able to get this off. So I'm going to take both of those out, throw them away, and probably get some lug studs, which would be much better, and mount it on there. In my last video, I was rotating the tires on this Tesla right here and showing you guys how I spin the tire. And it shows if it's balanced or not and if the rim's bent. Well, right here... I'm using my eyes to line up with the trailer and watch whenever I spin this. What? So right here as that spins, you can see there is a high spot and there is a low spot. And this is the what the bouncing is. I'm going down the road at about 30 to 40 miles per hour. It is horrible being pulled behind this Tesla right here. It just basically sets there and hops. Now you go faster, 50 plus miles an hour, and it basically straightens out. It's still hopping back there. The rhythm though is just a little different peak and basically you don't feel it as much going down the road you can see it there's a high spot and a low spot 30 to 40 miles an hour the trailer is hopping you can see it in the rear mirror and that's basically going to fix that that is bias plot tires on this triton trailer that's like a two thousand dollar trailer and while they put the cheapest tires they can get on this trailer just to save a buck while i'm putting some of the best tires you can buy this is a radial tire on this trailer all right, so a little note right here, you probably wanna upgrade your lug nuts the same time you're upgrading your rims because these are actually 21s and these are more like a 19, but they take this special lock, basically uh, the socket right there, it comes with the kit and they're gonna look a whole lot nicer. I think these right here, they probably would work. You'd have to have a really thin wall socket and I feel like you'd mess up the freshly uh, painted rim right there with a the socket. It's gonna scrape it whenever you're taking them off and on. So I would just throw these out right here and upgrade to some lug nuts just like this and they're gonna look really nice on this custom rim. Here's a pretty important tip when putting on wheels or tires. These lug nuts right here have a little concave edge on all lug nuts pretty much have this concave edge and that is pretty much to center the wheel this hub right here is not hub centric to the hub on the trailer. And these aftermarket wheels and tires are the same way. They're basically like a universal trailer tire. So how can you tighten this in a way that it centers itself? Cause it will centers itself, but you wanna be careful whenever you tighten each lug nut and just go very slowly. Tighten that one, tighten this one very slowly. It takes a couple extra seconds, and I've already went around and did a couple of them, but whenever you do that, you can actually see the wheel move up, move this way, move that way, and it actually gets that perfectly center instead of hammering one lug nut tight. 
Here is another example of look how much this thing is hopping. That is crazy. And you can imagine going down the road at the interstate going 30 miles an hour. I'm barely spinning this tire. This jet ski is hopping all over the place. And that's why. Right here, I've got the solution. Here, you should be able to see the wheel self-center itself as I'm speaking. Right here, you tighten these extremely slow. And you can see the wheel actually lift it up a little bit. So right here, I'm gonna do the same thing. You can see the wheel twisted a little bit right there. You can do this by hand. This first step is one of the most important ones to get a non-hub centric wheel. Most cars are hub centric, but as you can see right here, I can stick my finger in between. This is the hub and this is the wheel. Even the factory trailer wheels that come on it was the same size of the diameter right here. So these are centered on the concave lug nuts. This thing is perfectly spinning. So this is gonna ride very smooth going down the road. All right, so these E-Custom rims right here, they come aired up right from the factory, shipped directly to your door. Uh, they come with the factory rated, it appears like 65 pounds uh, right here. It's showing 64 right here. And it says 65 pounds cold is the inflation range. And I'm gonna run these at 60 pounds on the jet ski trailer because I'm not uh, maxing out this capacity right here. It says 1,220 pounds at 65 pounds of pressure and i want 60 pounds you can see right there i've got 60 so i'm gonna unscrew that put the cap back on and we are ready to roll now that we got the brand new rims and tires bolted on my jet ski trailer it can ride smooth down the road thanks to ecustomrim.com so check it out links down in the description below and now we're going to get on to the next video with some waves rx products i cannot wait to try out this tri anchor i've threw it in the garden a couple times showing in my previous videos waves rx seven foot line this anchor line right here i cannot wait to try this out and then i've got the three feet bungee lines right here from waves rx they got this stainless steel really nice not gonna rust and then i've got the waves or x tri fender so three feet of total coverage right here discount code in the links below 15 percent off your waves or x products all right so if you've watched this far you probably want to order some of these and where can you get them so i'm gonna have the link amazon link to these exact trailer tires down below these are e customrims.com you can go directly to the website you don't have to click my link but the link does help out the channel tremendously these videos take a long time to film and edit and i would appreciate it if you use my link if you're going to order some of these tires so check them out thanks for watching make sure and smash that like button and subscribe for more all right, so I've got the wheels and tires, even the spare on there, although the spare I could not get tight because the bracket, uh, it had a faulty nut, and basically it wasn't cross-threaded because you can see all the, the basically they're, they're perfect, the threads, but it got to that point, it's not tight. You can see I can push the wheel. You can see how much that it's not tight up against the actual bracket. It wouldn't tighten. It wouldn't loosen. So all the threads on this nut just suddenly stri uh, stripped off. And uh, I'm having to cut the nut off. I'm trying not to damage the wheel, although I did nick the wheel, unfortunately, right there. But I'm having to cut that off. The back of the bolt is another option, but uh, it is a carriage bolt, and it's flat on the back. So, And you got the wheel, so it's concave, and you can't really get to it. Although, All right, so I always like showing the good, bad, and the ugly. I did not film a whole lot because it was in the dark over there on the jet ski. My camera doesn't do exactly that great. And you can see right here, so this is the carriage bolt. I actually I had to cut two of them off just to get that off to this point and now i got to drill out the carriage bolt on this stainless steel and i'll have links to all this in the description below on what not to buy so the tires and rims perfect already took it for a test drive it is silky smooth and my jet ski no longer bounces anymore however this right here i couldn't get the uh, carriage bolt as you've seen earlier in the video i couldn't get it tight it wouldn't loosen wouldn't and so now i'm messing with this so basically you can see right here it did the same thing to the long carriage bolt this is what holds the bracket to the jet ski trailer so this is like some of the cheapest um stainless steel i guess money can buy right here this is crazy it got half like i already tightened it, it the bracket was all, all good but I went to loosen it, and as soon as it got right here, it just stopped. It wouldn't tighten, it wouldn't go up. So then I had to cut it basically off of the trailer. So this is pretty crazy. And uh, this right here, now I have to drill out. I, you can see I've already started drilling that carriage bolt just to make sure that it was gonna drill out. And I can't, you know, without damaging the wheel, 
I can't like cut this. I, I, you know, I tried to, but I can't cut in here in the recess. This is an aluminum wheel, brand making new from E Custom Rim. Thank you, E Custom Rim, for sending me this set of three. And I hate that I've had all this trouble, but I haven't had trouble with the rims and tires they sent me. This is a completely different company. Uh, I bought this bracket with my own money, just to be clear, off of Amazon. I'll have links. The bracket seems to be uh, pretty nice. You know, the welds, although it does have some, it's supposed to be stainless steel, but it has like a little rust mark on it. Brand new. I just unboxed it. And uh, I've had all this trouble. So this is going to be sent back and I'm going to be uh, checking around for another stainless steel mount because this hardware is brand new and I had to cut, you can see I had to cut the carriage bolts off. I mean, that's like this is like a $50 mount too uh, for this bracket. Stainless steel, I tried to buy the best that I could buy. And uh, $50, it doesn't get you much these days, but I actually got to drill that out just to get it off my wheel. This is the backside. It also missed... Uh, this is an aluminum brand new wheel not even a mile on it it messed the the basically the hole where it goes into the uh, stud it wasn't cross threaded right here threads are perfect threads are perfect this nut right here you can see it's got like a nylon thread it basically went on that much wouldn't tighten wouldn't loosen uh, used a three foot breaker bar and finally it broke loose but it's stuck in this position right here. It just sets and spins. It won't move at all. So do not recommend, absolutely, unless you want to be stuck on the side of the road and you would not be able to get your spare tire off. A big shout out though to ecustomrim.com for sending me this set of tires. I hate that I had to mess up uh, this, but I will get a better bracket. Let me know what you guys recommend.